Hello, this is Mr. Weideman, and I am picking up on Wednesday's lecture right before Thanksgiving. And if you recap, we had gone over the general equation for parabolas. Uh, we had a general equation for a vertical parabola, and then we had our general equation then for our um, horizontal parabola. And then what we did is we worked a, a problem, and I'm going to recap that real quick. And we had this problem that we did in class as an example. Um, a graph, and then how do we generate our equation? So I'm just going to go through this real quick. We know that it opens left. We know the vertex. That means the y squared term is going to be on the left side of the equation. And we have the vertex. And this is a multiple choice problem, part G. Okay, where we picked up then on Wednesday is a little bit more complex uh, problem solving, um, writing equations and graphs of parabolas. And basically each problem is I'm just given different sets of information, but essentially asked to do the same thing. Uh, sometimes you're given the focus, sometimes you're given the directrix, sometimes you're given the endpoints of the lattice rectum and things like this and we need to figure out the equation and the graph. I usually like to do both simultaneously. And what do we need to find here? We need to find our equation and we need to graph it and then we need to find the two endpoints that define the lattice rectum. And we had just touched on this Tuesday, and we got more depth into it on Wednesday, what exactly all that means. So just hang on, and we will get to that part. Let's do the part that we know. <clears throat> the key strategy, I think, in all parabola problems, all conic section problems, you're going to see me do the same thing. I'm always going to start off by plotting. Um, it usually gives me a lot of hints as to the orientation of whatever my conic section is. All right, so I'm given the focus and the vertex. We know that lies on the axis of symmetry. All right, so this is going to be some sort of horizontal line parabola. Does it open to the right or does it open to the left? Well, we know that the focus it always lies inside the parabola. The directrix always lies outside. Now, how did I get the directrix? Well, you can do a bunch of fancy algebra, or we can just look. Since we've got these points, the distance between the focus and the vertex is 4. Therefore, the distance between the vertex and the directrix also has to be 4. That's why I like to plot these points and do this kind of visual as well as algebraic. So our parabola is going to lie in there somewhere like that. So it's horizontal, opens left. So then that means that our y squared term will be on the left side. We plug in the coordinates for our vertex. A is 4, okay, that we looked at from our graph. That is the distance between the focus and the vertex, and the vertex and the directrix. Okay, so here's our equation for the parabola. Now, what about this lattice rectum thing? Lattice means alongside, meaning this line is alongside the directrix, kind of parallel to rectum, despite what you think in middle school, means straight. So when I say lattice rectum, I'm meaning a straight line through the focus parallel to the directrix. So what we're after is we're after this endpoint and we're after this endpoint to define the line. And we know something about those points. Since those points pass through the focus, we know their x-coordinate. Their x-coordinate has to be 4. So let's plug in, excuse me, negative 4. So let's plug in negative 4 into our parabola equation 
and get these two y coordinates. So we're looking for this guy and we're looking for this guy. Why? Because we know this stuff right here. Okay, so let's continue. Now it's just plug and chug. So when we substitute in, do a little solving, we've got a y squared. Remember, when you take the square root, you get two answers. So y is positive 8 and negative 8. And those, gives a, those give us then the y values of our endpoints of the lattice rectum. And we're going to talk about there's actually a little bit easier way to do this by inspection. And I'll get to that on the next problem. Okay, what do we have here? Same drill. I'm just given a little bit different information. And it's just repeat of the theme, repeat of the theme, repeat of the theme. Okay, so again, I like to plot what I know. Okay, so this tells me that I have a vertical axis of symmetry and that the focus lies inside the parabola halfway between the focus and the vertex. All right, so I can easily tell that my A value here is going to be 1, and I open upward. That means the x squared term is going to be on the right-hand side of the equation. I've got my coordinates for my vertex, and so I can substitute that in. Now I got the coordinates of the vertex. I got this guy right here because I know that if this value here at the focus is a y-coordinate of 4, then the vertex is a distance A, in this case, 1 away from that. So I, that's where I get that y-coordinate of 3. All right, and then I'm ready to fill out my equation. And it also asks us for the uh, lattice rectum. I can do it algebraically, just like I did last time. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Except this time I know the y-coordinate. So I'm going to plug in my y-coordinate of my lattice rectum, which is 4. That's where this guy comes into play, because that has the same y-coordinate as this guy, this guy, and this guy, right? And so I'm going to solve for this guy and this guy. And that's where we get our endpoints. Now there's another way to do this. If we remember what our definition of a vertex is, I can figure, out, figure this out. Okay, remember that the definition of a parabola is this distance from here to here. I'm saying this wrong. The distance from here to here has to be the same as the distance from here to here. The focus to the point on a parabola has to be equal to that point to the directrix. And I drew that too long. There we go. All right. And it looks like I've got this fairly well drawn to scale. Well, this is easy. What is this distance right here? This distance is 2a. It's always going to be 2a. So what does the distance from here to here have to be? It has to be 2a. All right, so that's another way to find um, 
this coordinate value. So kind of clever once you get used to working with it. Okay, so let's clean up this mess. And didn't want to do that. And let's go on to the next problem, which is your homework. And that's what we did in the remainder of class. So these example problems should be enough to key you off into how to set up these problems uh, and solve them. Most of the problems that you're going to have are going to be some sort of variation of the examples that I just gave you. This will be due on Monday when we return back to school. Enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving break.